What would your life be like if you could see life that way? Yeah, I kind of like think, I used to say, you've got Teflon consciousness. <laughs> Nothing can do what to you? Nothing can stick to you because you, you realize any of that stuff has no reality. Any of that stuff has no reality. Okay, you're bigger than all of it. If it's in your life, it's in your consciousness, it's there for you, it's there to be teacher to you. So you don't have to get all upset. You just can know I am supplied and supported, because you are. If you want to wind out in some crazy story, you can. I don't know where it'll get you. The blind leads the blind, they wind up where? So it's not, look, if you're smart, you just don't want to keep doing it that way, right? There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Guess who said that? From our textbook. <laughs> the Power of Thought, page 137. It's one thing to know a principle. It's altogether another to apply it. A lot of us here know a bunch of stuff. <laughs> now whether we apply it or not, that's a whole different matter. Louise A would say it's all very simple. It is. Our teaching's not hard. Anybody can do it. But you gotta wanna do it. You really gotta want a better life and you'll have a better life, right? No one ever said it's gonna be easy. I only ever promised anybody it's gonna be worth it. You ever hear this one? There's an image. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Hear no evil. <clears throat> if I'm practicing this teaching, when stuff is going on, I don't have to hear it in such a way that I'm piling on and being a part of it. I don't have to see it that way either. I can realize that people are doing the best they can with what they got. And I certainly don't need to talk about it. Do I? No, nope, not at all. Okay. If I'm practicing the presence and I'm knowing all is perfect, I'm not about that. Well, I actually am about that. I want to hear it, see it, or speak of it. How enlightened is it to be involved in all that nonsense? Our work is to take the conversation higher, not to be about that nonsense. Lifting ourselves up higher and higher. From our textbook, Ernest Holmes said, daily we must control all thought that denies the real. Daily we must control all thought that denies the real. That would mean most of our thought, our day-to-day -day chatter. Daily we must control that. Daily we affirm the divine presence within us. Suffering is not God-ordained, for those of you who like to suffer. It's not of God. Suffering's not God-ordained. Emerson wrote, for it, for it is only the finite, that's us, right? For it's only the finite that has wrought and suffered. The infinite lies stretched in smiling repose. So we can do the games that men and women do. We can suffer, we can complain, and we can do all the things we do. And eventually we wake up and we realize there's no real benefit with all that stuff. Okay, I don't want to suffer. I don't suffer, most usually. I'm pretty good when things come in that look icky to do what? What do you imagine? I, when I used to teach this in Hollywood years ago, I always imagined fish hooks. Every day, because I had a lot of business stuff going on and people coming at you from all directions. And they're all kind of like, in my mind, like hooks. You don't have to chomp onto everything, right? You can just do what with those? Let them drop. If you don't go into the fight, there is no fight. Seriously. You just notice it. And you notice it. And you just don't respond to it. There is then no limitation outside of our own ignorance. And since we can conceive of a greater good than we have experienced so far, let's start conceiving of a greater good. All of us have the ability to transcend previous experiences. And we can rise, and we can rise, and we can continue to 
There's a key. Willingness is the key that opens the door. I've seen that written in so many places. Spiritual disciplines, 12-step programs everywhere. Willingness is the key. Well, willingness, I need to have the willingness to surrender the old ideas, the old ways of being, what it used to be like, so I can truly enter into a what? Absolutely. We shall never triumph if we persist in holding on to old ideas and reactions. In the book Super Attractor, Gabby Bernstein says, do you resist feeling good? Some of you do because you're caught up in a bunch of what? Stories. We have a tendency to self-sabotage everybody. Do you realize that? Sometimes, you know, this worry and fear is what you do. My grandmother used to do that. My father used to say she wouldn't be happy if she wasn't doing that. I thought, what the heck does that mean? She was a constant worrier. Are you like that? The weather, the economy, your retirement. You do everything to take you out of where? I promise you you're going to eat today. I promise you the sun is going to rise tomorrow. I promise you, you know. But we worry about stuff. So what's that all about? It's a way of sabotaging our present moments. We have a tendency to do that. Fear seems to be more comfortable for people. Fear protects us from being disappointed, hurt or triggered, Miss Bernstein says. We don't trust that things can be good. Make feeling good a high priority is the suggestion. Okay? So how can you do that? Being committed to be happy. God's will for me is to be happy, joyous, and free. You've heard me say that a thousand times, right? It's a real simple idea. I learned it 39 years ago. I was, went into a, the AA program 1980. And some old timer said, the universe's will for you is to be happy, joyous, and free. That's always been the test. If I'm not happy, joyous, and free today, I'm somehow in ego and I'm somehow trying to control something. And have I learned to let go of stuff? As soon as I realize that I'm not happy, joyous, and free, I'm practicing. Doesn't have to be difficult. Once again, a super attractor learns to identify and clarify any fearful thinking, any messaging, uh, and forgive yourself for having those messages and move on, drop it, replace it, neutralize it. And it sounds like a lot like what we do with spiritual mind treatment. Okay, so the three steps are to clarify your fears, Ms. Bernstein says. Notice the fear. Forgive the chatter, the fearful thoughts, and choose again. This is not news to me, but I'm going to teach you what was taught to me many years ago. We live in an, an abundant, abundant, abundant universe. It gives and gives and gives and gives. It doesn't know how to do anything else but respond to you. Do you have that? It so loves you that it responds to your every thought. If you say, I'm a creep, I'm no good, guess what happens? <laughs> That's your experience. <laughs> so it behooves us. <laughs> Is that a word? It behooves us <laughs> to have a higher, higher opinion of the most important person in our world, which is ourselves. Super attractors, like any dedicated truth students know there's more than enough to go around. In our textbook on page 187, there's solid advice. Ernest Holmes writes, never limit your view of life by any past experience. There is no failure in God. There's no failure in the universe and truth. It's simply a question of sticking to an idea until there's a demonstration. I stay with a treatment theme simply. I keep it simple. I am supplied and supported. I don't necessarily always try to define what the good is. But I know that I'm whole and complete. And I'm supplied and supported. And then I just I keep knowing that. And the more I know it, I see evidence of it. And then I get to be amazed by the givingness of life. It just keeps unfolding in greater ways. Wouldn't you like to have that be your reality? Repeat after me. I am supplied and supported. supported. And new super attractors. Know that there's more than enough to what? 